to work on trying to sweep this series, try to work their way up the table in the MIVA. And then winning close sets. And the last time these two teams met, it, the difference was no more than three points. And again, Ball State's had a lot of two set victories, including the other night. So it's really, really important for Ball State to stay close to it. And for the Ramblers, it's really trying to get the quick back, trying to get more established in the middle, and then more doubles, more people scoring over 10 points in a match. The serve from Patrick Rogers has us underway in the opening attack from the freshman Jake Reed, hitting an impressive 357 on the season. The young man from Newport Beach, California, gets things going. Reed's done a really nice job as a freshman stepping in on the outside. He's a complete player, does a really good job from the serving line as well. McElligant with a service ace, an assist to the net on that one. It's a nice start on the opening points for the Ramblers. One of the unique things for the Ramblers is that they have multiple players that are left-handed, and they'll come from out of Area 5, taking the ball back towards Area 5 against their opponent. That was McElligant's 12th service ace of the season. Long run there from Machado into the block of Loyola. Went Savitsky Lind. Ramblers on block duty again. It's a combination of Van Buren and Meinhardt for the denial. It's another matchup here in Chicago where you see Parker Van Buren go up against one of their top players in the league. Uh, this number 18 and Davos Ochoa for, for Ball State. Another service for McElligot. Near side, and Davos Ucheva gets his first kill of the match. The junior from Masvingo, Zimbabwe. Just a dominant attacker, one of the best in the MIVA. He's one of the best in the country, and that's even with a number of matches. He was out early in the year. Does an, just an amazing job continuing to expand his game. This Ball State team has certainly flexed their depth this season. Very few players to play in every match. On the attack goes Van Buren, dug out just enough by Rogers and Davazucheva, and a lean forward by Fabakovic. The tip over from Van Buren. Ball State with a chance to set something up on the far side. Savitsky Lind, dug out by the Ramblers. Awkward there, but well done by Reed to keep the point alive. From the back row, it's Rogers dug out, and it catches the line. Don't know if he meant it, but Ryan Miguel get a perfectly placed dig for a kill. For those who say men's volleyball doesn't have rallies, we welcome you here to this match tonight. <laughs> it's it's going to be a big battle. Both teams understand the importance of this match here in Chicago. Ramblers already flexing their prowess on the block, and that catches the line from Braden Savitsky Lynn, the freshman from Roscoe, Illinois. Was a two-time conference MVP at Hanaga Community High School. Hananiga. As we take another look. For sure, Hananiga's another place where they've getting some guys coming out to, 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 to expand their game here at the college level. Ball State finally with the serve back on the attack. Goes Meinhardt, dug out, and Davazucheva off the block for Oakley. Far side, Fabakovic wide. Just too much of an angle by the freshman from Brekle, Cheshire. The, the one thing you'll see with both these teams is their tempo from setter's hand or hitter's hands. Not only on the pins, out, left side, right side, out, also out of the back row. Another serve here for Savitsky Lind coming off a seven kill performance in a sweep of Purdue Fort Wayne on Thursday. Miguel gets setting for Fabakovic, who's denied. Lucas Machado, the freshman setter, picks up a kill. So we've seen early runs now from both sides. Ramblers start off with, a, with an early run off the serve of Miguel Gitt, And now Ball State responds to tie this, this set up here at four. Savitsky Lind with six aces to his name from the service line this season. Fabakovic. Miguel Gitt, the back set. And it's a kill for Parker Van Buren. Ramblers able to finally get the ball back on their side, courtesy of MVB. Then it's going to be really nice to see Van Buren go against Endavis Ocheva to see two of the nation's best get after it here tonight. Endavis Ocheva, who does have 12 block assists on the season, from the back row, full throttle for the kill. Seeing young players out here that time. Nice swing there by Savitsky Lynn out of the back row. You know, we see a bunch of freshmen. Sabisky Lin's a freshman, Reed, Fabakovic. I mean, it's, it's kind of nice to see how the new cycle of players here in the MIVA and also in the country showing their way through. 
And Davizucheva to serve. The honorable mention AVCA All-American last year. Quick set over by Van Buren. On the attack, it's Rogers. He's denied by the Ramblers. We interesting to see where the call comes from. Looks like the call was that the ball was played off of the block to score. This might be an interesting one to look at. Now they're going to say the point goes to Ball State. I think the ruling in the end was that the block went on the wrong side of the post. Yeah, so it looks like Van Buren's hand contacted the ball, and then the ball went into the antenna. That serve wide from Indavazucheva, and a point for Loyola. Six all here, evenly matched. You mentioned, Ray, a game of runs so far. Yeah, and, and usually in, in the volleyball game, what you'd like to try to do is do your best to side out as quickly as you can and then get a chance to serve as many times as you possibly can. Got another look there. It looked like the right hand of Dean Meyer hit the post when he went up for that block. That is what prompted the whistle. Van Buren serving. And an easy killer, making it look easy at least. Will Patterson, the freshman, gets his first of the night. Be interesting to see how the middles have impact on both sides tonight. Both Wallace Patterson for, for Ball State, Dean Meyer, and Meinhardt for Loyola. Serve from Patterson now. McElligot, talk about an easy kill. How about that by Dean Meyer, the big 6'10 man, the junior leading the MIVA in blocks, but he's a pretty good attacker too. Does a pretty good job offensively, and that's what Coach Hawks would really like to see out of his team is balance, as much balance as he possibly can find. He did hit 800 in their last match, although that was only on six total attempts. McElligot from the back row, it's Van Buren, comes right back to him. Some confusion between him and Meyer yields a point to the Cardinals. Rambits were there. Van Buren was there. Meyer had a, a just an unlucky touch on the cover that time from the swing. A serve from the Brazilian setter, Machado. McElligot looking to the far side for Reed. And that does enough to get a point for the Ramblers. Enjoyed seeing Miguel get kind of evolved so far this year. He had a start initially out in Hawaii. And from that moment of that match out there in Honolulu to what he's done now, he's done a really nice job. He just continues to play steady. But again, like I told you before, the setting room for the for the Ramblers is pretty solid. Yeah, Miguel get only played in 11 sets last year. This is already his 41st. As that is just slammed to the floor by Tanashi and Davazucheva. And Davazucheva comes out of the back row on the bick. So you saw Ball State start off initially with some of the quick, and then they can go to the back row to the bick. And Davazucheva now 111 kills on the season, averages over 3.75 per set. Another attack for Reed. Might have been going out, but Machado took no chances. Tipped over from the back row by Rogers. Great run to get there by Oakley, but it's in the net for McElligot, who tried to turn setter into attacker instead. McElligot's a pretty physical attacker. Surprised me early in the year. I didn't realize how offensive he was, and he has the capability of scoring points like that on the front row. Does have 28 kills this season. Not a bad mark for a player who's primarily a setter. Rogers on the serve for Ball State. From the back row, Van Buren dug out by Machado. Kept in play by the libero Gray, and Davazucheva into the block and a point for Ball State. Ordinarily, I thought I, the play was going to be a little out of sorts for the Ramblers. Might see a, might see a timeout here from the Ramblers. Loyola do take the first timeout of the first set as we take another look. As that just went out of play, we're in his debut at the Division I level. What an impact Cruz has made, Ray, since becoming a Cardinal. Coach Cruz has been a great addition for Ball State, bringing that program, a historic program, back to... To, to, to national prominence. Yeah, that opening season was their first 20 win year since 2016. In 2022, they made it to their first NCAA tournament in 20 years, and it's just been dominance ever since. Three straight 20 win campaigns. Coming our way, there was Miguel Aguit and a block, and Davazucheva combining with Rodney Wallace, the senior transfer from Lindenwood, to stuff that one. Seeing multiple runs now for Ball State. Might look to see a change somewhere from the Ramblers at some point. All State been on a run more or less for the last 10 points. Foot fault called against Rogers. That ball still might be traveling right now. 
Rogers certainly does not leave anything behind when he winds up for those serves. He's putting all of his six foot seven frame behind him. If you're in Evanston, you can see that ball. Make sure you bring it back, please. Thank you. We appreciate the handout. Miguel get on the serve. Machado quick set there for Wallace. Kept off the floor by Fabakovic. Van Buren gets the kill right when the Ramblers needed it. Again, Ramblers looking to get them that run back now. Gave up a little mini serving run here, but led to the timeout. Miguel gets started the run for the Ramblers and to start the match. And he's at the service line now. Five assists for him so far. Machado for Andava Zucheva. Off the fist of Miguel get point right back. Again, we talked about the tempo of the teams. Both teams are doing a solid job with first contact. Ball got tossed outside from Machado outside to Enzava Sacheva to score the point for Ball State. First look there at the Lindenwood transfer, Rodney Wallace, where he played in 89 sets over two competitive years. And it's a block right down the middle. Will Patterson, the denial. And I mentioned early, Ray, how good Loyola looked on the block. Ball State has dominated at the net over the last several points. Yeah, Ball State's done a nice job. It is really starting with their serving. The serving pressure from Ball State's led to some solid touches on the block. Wallace again. Oakley. The set there found Van Buren, and it's off the block, and it's a point for the Ramblers as the teams continue to trade back and forth. And, and you know, you, you just mentioned trade back and forth, which, which would be okay, but right now for the Ramblers, they've given up at least three multiple point, point runs. And that's where we're at right now, where the Ramblers are chasing by five. Back and forth is not going to do it when you're now down by six. Ball State would gladly take a trading of points the rest of this first set. You mentioned, Ray, that first match this year, all four sets decided by two points, and two of them required more than 25 for the winner. Serve here from Savitsky Lind. Reed, long run from McElligot. And then right into the block, it was enough power by Fabakovic to win the point. Nice job by Fabakovic to get his, get his arm on the ball fast enough to be able to score that in front of the block of Ball State. Fabakovic, who won a silver medal with Chechia at the U18 European Championships last year, a decorated youth international. Machado for Patterson, blocked right back. This time he goes for Savitsky Lind, and that'll be a point for Ball State. And Sabisky Lynn stays pretty physical back behind. Whether well, it's front row or back row, he's done a nice job attacking. We've seen two back row attacks now that have led to points for Ball State. Savitsky Lind, three kills on five total attacks so far, yet to make an error on the attack. And Dava Zucheva to serve. Started his collegiate career at Weber International Uni University. Now in his third year as a Ball State Cardinal. Van Buren, that's a nice dig for Ball State. And the man who had the dig was Savitsky Lind, and he puts it into the block and out of play for another Cardinal point. You can see here a setting change for the Ramblers. Props to Ball State early. Done a nice job of handling the swing of Van Buren. Van Buren's taking a couple balls cross court that have been handled by the Ball State defense. And they see Schobel coming back, coming in now to set. Yeah, the message defensively certainly right from Ball State has been you're going to have to use somebody other than plan A in Van Buren to beat us. That ball takes a carom off the scoreboard. Ramblers kept their heads about it. Machado, far side, Savitsky Lind. Dug out there by Reed. Far side, Fabakovic gets the point. You mentioned that subbing, sub Ray at the center position into the match now is Cole Schobel, the freshman from Costa Mesa, California, out of modern day high school. A volleyball and all around athletics juggernaut of a preps program. Most definitely, Schobel's a gamer. He knows how to play. Machado to the near side for Rogers. Impressed with Ball State handling the first contact right now. Good serve by Van Buren, but managed well by Ball State, which allows them to have more of the momentum right now you see here in, the, in this first set. Rogers, a prolific attacker. He's second in the MIVA in kills per set this season at 3.93 entering today. On the attack went Schobel, but off target was the freshman setter. It's another point for Ball State, who are closing in on taking a dominant opening frame, and that yields a second timeout for the Ramblers. Rare challenge for a conference championship. It's going to be an exciting MIVA tournament, as always this season. It's really just about positioning 
when we get there. Machado to the back row for Andalvazuchevo with a kill right out of that timeout. Again, Ball State continues to be a step ahead right now. We saw even in transition, just being able to run the ball back behind back row to one or no block from the Ramblers. New entry, this is Xander Pink, the junior from Hawaii. Set here for Van Buren, there he is. Gets back on the score sheet there, number 14 in white with a kill. A little adjustment there from Van Buren. Nice set by Schobel, leading him a little bit more. Takes the ball to the high right back corner to score. Ball State just made another change. Number 11, Lucas Pitlack is in at the libero position. They'll use a couple guys in that spot as Fabakovic prepares to serve for Loyola. Davazucheva, Machado, near side for Rogers off the block for a point, Ball State. Rogers again continues his hot hand. Nice swing off the block. Just plays smooth. Does a real nice job. Sees the situation, handles it really well. Five kills for Andavzucheva, four for Zavitsky Lind, and three for Rogers. Just tapped over there. What a dig by the setter Machado. Over by Rogers as diving to the floor went Oakley. Reed right down the line. Precision from the Loyola freshman. I'll tell you, that's probably one of the most impressive things I've seen from Reed this year. I watched it earlier in the year when he played when the Ramblers played at Purdue Fort Wayne. And he did a really nice job taking the ball outside of the block, down the line. He saw three blockers up there, three sets of hands, or three pairs of hands, excuse me, uh, from Ball State. He did a really nice job attacking the ball around the block to score. First appearance of the day for the freshman, Lucas Anderson on the serve. Rogers, Machado, Savitsky, Lind gets his fifth kill. You can kind of see where Ball State's found a pretty solid home attacking the ball into like the one six area of the court down the line on the left side attack. Patrick Rogers now to serve the Cardinals two points from taking the opening frame, which they've mostly controlled. Fabakovic right at the net. Here comes Van Buren. Nice set there as well by the freshman Schobel. Nice job by Schobel. Schobel showing himself consistently throughout the year where he can set the ball or or turn and swing on it. Ball State has to give him full respect. And Schobel knows that if he plays well out there, he'll probably get to keep those minutes, keep those reps. Schobel on the serve into the net. Set point, Ball State. Maybe got just a little bit too excited after that nice set. Yeah, Rambo just have to figure out a way now just to just settle themselves down. A lot of the the strength from Ball State's coming from the airs of, of, of the Ramblers. Rodney Wallace to serve for the set. Reed, Schobel back for Reed. Nice read on that trajectory by Patterson. Savitsky Lind right to Fabakovic. Schobel, Van Buren is blocked inbounds. And the opening set, 25-16 to Ball State. We'll take a break here in between sets one and two. Ball State, can they dominate set two? Had seven assists before he went to the bench. Good strong serve, and we're underway in set number two. Alex Campbell and Ray Gooden with you. Thanks for joining us this afternoon, this evening for men's NCAA Division I volleyball. From the back row, off the net, it's loose at the net, and a nice heads-up play by Jimmy Meinhardt earns the point for Loyola. Good job by the Rambers to win that scramble play. What the Rambers were going to have to do is make sure they respect the Bick a little bit more. Might see here a little issue with with Wallace with his contact. Ball State to get a chance to reset themselves. But we've noticed so far offensively for Ball State when they've run the Bick, they've usually had one blocker to go up against at best. So the Rams want to do a good job of having good eyes and understand what the situation is. Try to get more sets of hands out there to try to touch the ball on the back row attack. So Rodney Wallace figuring out his eyewear situation. Mm -hmm. That was a contact, but the good news is he looked like it fell right into his hand and he didn't lose it on the floor. It's both good for him and both good to avoid any slipping or tripping hazard for all the players out of the floor as he's in conversation with the training staff. We take another look at that opening point. You talked about the scramble play here that the Ramblers were able to come out on top of. A little craziness there. Good job by Miguel get playing the ball up in the air. Babakovic plays it. And then Reed takes it over to the back row attack. 
from Rodgers. And in that situation, I think there was a little action where Wallace, the guy got contacted. I, I think that the ball from Meinhardt might have actually hit him in the eye and knocked the contact loose. That's a rare occurrence, but number 10 in red is back out there. And after one point, we're ready to get the second set restarted. That is good. McGill get to serve. And Davizucheva, that's a service ace for McGilligan. Only the second of the match for the Ramblers. We saw the Ramblers play here last time against Ohio State. Ohio State did a good job of winning the first set. Ramblers came back and, and evened up set number two with a win. Let's we'll see if they continue the hot hand. McGilligan with both of those service aces, that one well long for a server's error. So I think it's important for the Ramblers right now, as you see McGilligan and Shubble kind of go back and forth, is the consistency, no matter who's in there in the square to set, is going to be critical. The hitters want to be able to feel comfortable about running the, the routes that they want to run, no matter from who sets of hands they get it from. You mentioned, Ray, the one set in that 3-1 set loss that Loyola won in the first matchup was the second. Parker Van Buren hoping for a more prolific attacking set in set two, although he was solid with five kills in that opening frame. Did have three airs, though. Nice job by Van Buren to take the ball a bit sharper cross court in that situation in rotation one. Service air there by Jake Reed. The Ramblers just want to find a way to settle themselves down. Feel like they can have the advantage right now. Ball State did a really good job on the road of putting the pressure on the Ramblers here at home. Service airs have been a bit of a problem at times this year for the Ramblers. Four and a half on average per set. That's more than a full service error, more than Ball State commit on average. Reed, McGilligan, Van Buren for the teardrop. A long run there by Gray. And Davazucheva down the line. Dug out by McGilligan, helped out by Oakley. Van Buren just taps it off the block. Sometimes precision trumps power. It did there for Van Buren and the time, Ramblers. Again, you saw, and that was a trying to take the ball down the line. And McGilligan did a really nice job digging the ball, playing up in the air. And then to finish the play, Van Buren did a really nice job using his volleyball IQ to play it off the block of, and that was a trouble to score. Machado to the near side. Savitsky Lind. Right at you. That was launched just in between us. I, I didn't even see it coming. I think my body just instinctually moved out of the way of that one. I am part analyst and part bodyguard, so if you didn't know those are my roles here. <laughs> Always appreciate it. The first one's free. After that, we'll talk. And Davizucheva taking aim from the service line. From the back row, it's Reed. <laughs> Jake Reed with his fourth kill. So you see now the Ramblers use their version of the back row combination of the big. Again, did a really nice job. Reed goes up with only one set of hands to, to defend against. Nice way to swing the ball in the area five to score. Reed, who was two time first team all district in high school in Newport Beach, California, went to Newport Harbor High School. Machado to the far side for Rogers and did the nice little baby hook for the kill. <laughs> Rogers, a little cheeky play there. Trying to do his best version of Inga Path on the outside. Set a bit behind him. No problem for Rogers as serving now is Patterson. And cleaning up at the net with the left hand, Rodney Wallace. Looking here. Just a little gamesmanship going on. Again, important for the Ramblers to be able to keep the, the negative runs to a minimum. Ball stayed at about this point in the first set, gave themselves a lead, and they never relinquished it. What a hit by Van Buren, and somehow the Cardinals get it back over. Fabakovic. Both teams taking advantage of taking the ball down the line. Big swing from Van Buren on the back row attack. That was dug up by Ball State. Fabakovic with authority, the 6'6 freshman. Both teams do care about defense, that's for sure. Blocks so far, 5-1 in favor of Ball State. Machado brought it back, and taking advantage was Wallace. That did hit the floor, despite a brief playing on from the Ramblers' point, Cardinals. 
both blockers went up. Against Machado, thinking he might dump the ball, ended up setting the quick to score. Machado, the freshman setter. Already 16 assists today. And then three Ball State players stared at that ball. None of them made a decisive move. It's a point, Loyola. Nice smart play there by Reed. Again, not showing that he's a freshman. Just good IQ, play the ball right over the block to score. Sometimes players will get pretty panicked and they'll play it into the block real low and end up getting stuffed. Machado, far side, Savitsky Lind. That is off the scoreboard. Point, Ball State. Nice tempo there from Machado on the ball to the outside. That ring is pretty high here above the court at Gentile Arena, but not high enough to keep itself out of the action for a full match. Rogers to serve. Oakley toward the Loyola bench, back to the middle by Reed, and a full swing sails long by McGilligan. Again, kind of feel that momentum starting to edge a little bit more towards Ball State. Rambers want to do a good job, even just kind of slow that down and realize that Ball State's not going to give points to the Ramblers tonight. Ball State continues to be remarkably efficient, hitting 486 as a team. That'll help improve the Ramblers' attacking percentage. Jake Reed with the kill. And just seeing that, if you see the, the ring up above Gentil Arena here and this fantastic place. It's a great scoreboard that gives all the fans a view. Machado off the net. Rogers and Davazucheva from a standing start gets the kill. Really impressive to see him generate that sort of power from a flat-footed position. There'll be times where the pass is pretty solid and the center has multiple options. We call that being in system. There's also times when the ball's kind of on a scramble play that's out of system. That time was a little high ball outside. That was out of system, and Davison Chubb did a great job of playing that ball to score. Far side, taking aim again. Jake Reed has been the man so far in this second set for Loyola. And that's the flip there where the Ramblers were in system up with good first contact. They got to get with a nice toss back behind to Reed to score. Now Reed's looking to go on a serving run. Machado straight up. And easy play for Oakley. Near side, Fabakovic came right back off a block by Savitsky Lind. And then great aim, a little less power on that occasion from Parker Van Buren. Rogers unable to get there. Yeah, what you got to say is great height from that, from that swing from Van Buren. He is well over the block. No one's going to touch that ball. It's a great swing to score for the Ramblers. That is just wide on the serve for Jake Reed, who had been basically perfect so far in this second set. Yeah, and that's one of the strings for Reed. Reed is not necessarily one of the servers who's going to try to serve for a lot of power, but he does have consistency. 20 aces, 29 errors. So if nothing else, you can't say he doesn't go for it. Savitsky Lind serves right to Reed. Tapped over, adjusting in midair with his left hand was Meinhardt. What a job, though, by Gray to get it back over. Machado, Savitsky, Lind, what a denial. Fabakovic, Meinhardt there as well. And that's kind of one of those plays where if you're a young player, you can kind of see where it's a little scramble for Loyola. It wasn't managed well, but that doesn't mean the play is over. You can still do something, have impact, and that time Fabakovic comes in and picks his teammates up by getting a stuff block. Meinhardt to serve. Machado still able to have a nice set there. It's another strong block by the Ramblers. Reed. Didn't take chances, kept that in play. Van Buren gets the kill. Van Buren showing more range now. A few of his swings early you saw maybe hit right to a person playing defense. But now he's taking the ball with a little bit more range around a defender over the block to score. Van Buren a match high, eight kills. Meinhardt again serving. And Davazucheva, Machado went for the quick set. More of a, just a throw to the floor almost there by number nine in red a throw down you might see times tonight where the ball gets played from a player and it's gonna look like it's carried you're from your old school style but it's become more physical and it's become a lot more liberal when players play in the men's game and the best setters in the country can walk that very very fine line as Andava Zucheva's serve sails long Machado, that is his 25th kill on the season. So again, a guy who's liable to pull that out of his back pocket once in a while. 
for sure got to give Machado full respect. He might not be as aggressive as someone like McElligot or Schobel, but he still finds a way to pick and choose when he needs to. Won a U19 state championship in Brazil. Rogers slams it right down on a nice assist from Machado. And Rogers just continues to impress. Nice job taking that ball inside. Sharp inside of get to score. And this match matters to both these teams right now. Again, both three and one in MIVA play as that sails long. Service errors suddenly piling up from these two teams. Rambos want to do a good job of being the first team to 15 to the media timeout. We'll see what kind of serve Fabakovic has. He usually has a jump float, but he's also mixed up a topspin serve as well. Ramblers on a nice run overall right now after trailing by two just a few points ago. Savitsky Lind is blocked, but wide. Too much power there for Reed to do anything more with that. Nice toss by Machado on the back set. Back behind Savitsky Lind. He's going to take the ball high off the block. Machado serve into the net. And that'll take us to the media timeout at 15. A level. Shout out to the 815, of which I'm a product of myself. Yeah. Out of the timeout, it's a kill for Patrick Rogers. Yeah, nice job by, by Ball State. Getting a side out, keeping it within striking distance. Rogers now to serve. As Ball State looked to level this set at 15. Fabakovic, Miguel again. Over, long and wide though, by Van Buren. Point ball state. Second air for the Ramblers here in this set after attacking really well so far up to this point. In volleyball, you like to try to have a really good start, do pretty well around the media timeout, and try to play your best volleyball as you're moving towards 20, getting towards the end of the set. They are creeping up. They began this set hitting 038, and they've made it above 230 now, so. That is a market improvement as Rogers' serve goes into the net and McGilligan, the man with two aces on the day to serve for the Ramblers. Ramblers would really like to see McGilligan go on a serving run. Native of Mundelein, Illinois, another Metro Chicago native. That was interesting and I think had me fooled and maybe the Ramblers as well. It looked like Andava was about to put his hand through it and instead Rodney Wallace, number 10, picks up the kill. Again, nice job on Machado managing the ball. Rammers got caught in a situation where the ball was tight, but not tight enough to commit to blocking, especially with Machado being a back row setter. Xander Pink into serve. Saw him once in the first set. Long run from McGilligan. Van Buren, the wind up. Ball State saw it coming all the way, but they could not do enough to absorb that power as the block sails out of play. And as Rammers continue to find ways to rotate and get out situations. A lot of times, there's struggle for teams when they're in rotation one, when your opposite hitter's on the left side and your, and your outside hitter's on the right side. Van Buren, the first player today to reach 10 kills. Fabakovic was stuffed and went right to Oakley and Davazucheva. Ramblers are in the net. Point ball state. Delegate was trying to get himself out of that situation. Ended up getting caught in the net. Point to ball state. Savitsky Lind to serve. And that goes long. Another service ace in what has been a mistake-filled second set from the service line all around. Both teams are attacking the ball pretty well right now. Ball State's hitting over 40%. Ramblers are hitting over almost 40% almost themselves. Now it's just about being opportunistic as you see that Cooper Evans coming in for the Ramblers. First appearance of the day for the sophomore from Glenview, Illinois and Glenbrook South High School, appearing in his 13th set this season. And Evans right into the net. Special teams are a critical part of the game, especially in men's volleyball where you only allowed six total substitutions, where in the women's game you have 15 subs. So you're allowed to come in it and come out once, and starting doesn't count. So those moments where you see a, 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 a serving specialist come in or a blocking sub come in are really important to try to go on as long a run you can. You really have one job, and it's don't do that. 
but that's better. That's Parker Van Buren for kill number 11. Guys, players want to stay aggressive, but they want to also stay consistent. So again, nice job by McGilligan going against the flow, setting Van Buren. Getting a long set back behind, one-on-one. -on -one. Over to score the point for Van Buren over Rodgers. If it's 1v1, that's advantage Van Buren every time. His serve is just millimeters long. That was serve was really close. And again, you can still feel it where the Rammers just want to be able to have a little bit of a lead, get a chance, take a breath, feel pretty good about it. And I got a float server coming from Ball State. It's Patterson. Reed, McGilligan, and a kill for Dean Meyer. He's been quiet today. If he can get going offensively, Ray, that'll be a big benefit to the Ramblers. Yeah, you talk about Dean, both not only Dean and, and also Jimmy Meinhart. So the middles for the Ramblers. Haven't called their names much. Correct. Now you see what Ball State comes back and tries to do the same thing or go to the Bick. Machado, far side. Rogers catches the back line. Big swing. Nice job by Rogers. And that high cross corner, cross court spot. It's also just so great to watch when an attacker seems to float in midair like that. Most definitely. There's a player from Ball State way back in the day, Chris Bierman, um, who hit shots like that on a regular basis. Van Buren, nice dig by Gray. If a teammate can get there, no. It's a souvenir into the first row. Point Ramblers. Van Buren, that's kill number 12. So now you see another serving specialist coming back in. It's Anderson. And Ray, this is the kind of set we expected in every set today based on how the first match of this season Most went. definitely. So now Ball State's in the rotation one. They got Sabisky Lynn on the left side. Rodgers back behind. Serve from Anderson. Was well placed, but Rodgers got over. From the back row, it's Rodgers. And he just more or less whiffed on that one. Yeah, Barely see, made contact. Right, you might see a timeout here from Ball State. And you called it. It's going to be the timeout, the first timeout by Ivan in the nation in attacks per set. And we're seeing that so far today. 23 TAs for him so far. Anderson, another good serve. Adavas Ucheva, Machado. Well, swing, too strong of a swing from Patrick Rogers. Big point there for the Ramblers, two away from the set. We we'll talked about it again. Rotation one for teams sometimes can be a struggle because usually Rogers would like to hit on the left side, and Savisky would like to hit on the right side. Now, depending on who passes the ball, you can also see and Davis Ocheva involved out of the back row. Another great serve. Not quite an ace. It's saved by Savitsky Lind. Over by Davis Ucheva. Fabakovic, Miguelagit for Parker Van Buren. Right back over. A chance to set it up for Loyola. Miguelagit goes for it himself. Back over. Just a loose point right now. Rogers off the block for the kill. That was a big win there for Ball State. Again, another kind of scramble play. He saw good defense on both sides. Rammers had an opportunity, wasn't able to capitalize. Miguel gets swing, was hit the, hit the net first. Now the Rammers really want to work hard on this serve that's coming from Rogers, being able to manage it. Fabakovic, Miguel get, and a block there, and a fist pump, Savitsky Lind. Interesting to see if the Rammers might call timeout here. Man, you're clairvoyant with these timeouts so far right, today. You know, I also stayed at a Holiday Inn, too, but it's all right. <laughs> um, like, you got a spot now where pretty much the, the storyline's built for you. Ramblers are in rotation six, and that puts McGilligan in right front. And you have Reed on the outside. Probably the big hitter for the Ramblers in this spot will be Van Buren out of the back row on the right side. Gallagher usually could also be pretty offensive, but right now his, his ability to attack the ball hasn't been the strongest. Reed's been pretty solid today, but Sobiski Lynn did a really good job winning some of the fast points either with Ace or with, or with the block. Let's see where Van Buren is here in this spot. Rodgers to serve. Fabakovic. Miguel get back for Fabakovic. Not sure if the net or a ball state blocker got it first. Either way, we're tied at 23. Yeah, either spot right now. The, the big wasn't a bad idea. Just now you see another timeout here probably from the Ramblers. Back-to-back -back timeouts by Coach John Hawks. So you mentioned, Ray, that is Loyola's second, as now we are in first to two. So first gonna, to head by two, I should say. Right. Here first in the situation. All things considered off a good pass. 
Rogers gets us going again. Here's McGilligan looking for Van Buren. That's blocked right back to him. McGilligan to the near side for Reed in the block. And again, Wallace, Savitsky, Lynn put up a wall. And you see now for, you see a challenge here from the Ramblers for a net violation on the block, which also could be like a mini timeout. And real quick, if we haven't talked about it before, because our first challenge, you're allowed three challenges three challenges in the men's game you're allowed to challenge a touch ball in or out net violation attack line violation which is a 10-foot line and also serving line violation so i think uh, right now coach talks is looking to see if there's any kind of net action from from ball state in any particular situation first ball state good yeah where you see ball state's been able to use their strength is it's become more predictable that time the ramblers again tr tried to Tried to stay in, this, in the spot where they try to move Van Buren around a little bit and go in more in the middle of the court. So, I, again, I still look for Van Buren to get set on the right side. You know, you see the Ball State players right now, you don't have to get a chance to where the Ball State front row is really communicating right now about what they see, who's available, what's going on. Four straight points for the Cardinals, yield set point. Fabakovich, McGilligan. Far side, Van Buren, Machado, no. A back row of attacking violation. And that is how set number two ends. It's two sets to none, Ball State. A huge advantage now for the Cardinals as Loyola find themselves, Ray, in quite a hole. We'll take a break here. We're two sets in. Is there one more to go? Set. The Loyola crowd, this Loyola team looking to find some energy here in this third set. The attack there, that was Colton Brooks, number 13. He's in the match for the first time today. And Davis Ucheva over. Brooks get a lot of go. Over. Savitsky Lind, Machado from the back row. Authority there from Patrick Rogers for the first point of set number three. Ramblers have put in two new left sides. One with the experienced left sides in Jack Jens and, and Colton Brooks. And also Mangan's coming to set. So if you're keeping score at home, that is I now believe four different setters who have seen the floor today for Loyola. Change is not surprising though, given the way this match has gone. What a job to keep that off the floor by Jack Yentz, another new entry into the match. But it's Ball State who take it 2-0 lead to begin set three. Rodney Wallace with the kill. Yeah, real, real critical spot right now for the Ramblers where you could see this get away really fast. And Again, the strong serving of Rodgers leading to the early 2-0 lead. Rodgers again. Oakley, far side. Brooks winds up, and Loyola on the board to one ball state now here in set number three. So it's a good challenge here for the Ramblers to see the depth. You know, we talked about how the youth of the Ramblers have really helped them get to this point today. Now you're gonna see the experience. Brooks, Jens, Mangan have a lot of matches underneath their belt. Understand the, the how important this, this match is here in the league. Mangan last year was the setter on the all MIVA first team, and he's got his first assist today. Another point to the Ramblers, two all here in set number three. Nice block move that time by Meyer and Brooks on the back set. Interesting to see what how in Davos Ochoa manage the situation he's attacked some balls line when he's been on the left side early stages third set ball state leads two sets to none nice recovery by oakley to find van buren and it caught the line no the linesman disagree and in the end the head official confirms it was out good scramble there by, by the ramblers d meyer put the ball out of the net it's a nice ball that got played cross court high out of system Van Buren just took a little bit too wide. Just too wide, as you saw there on the replay. That serve off the net. Oakley reacted quickly, looking to put it away was Patterson. The windup from Van Buren, it's long. Can't see back-to-back areas. -back you might see Truby come in now for the Ramblers. Tallest man on this roster makes his first appearance of the day, the 6'11 redshirt freshman from Dallas. So you've seen Truby in before. Truby's been in the back half of a 6-2, and he has impressed. 
It's funny, he's the only Rambler to play in every match this season. It took us till the third set today to see him. Some disagreement between what happened there. Referees rule in favor of the Ramblers. Yeah, Dean Meyer went up, took a swing, hit it pretty sharp towards the sideline. Initially thought that the swing was out of bounds, but was in. A good look there, Colton Brooks, the redshirt senior from Pleasanton, California, playing in his 65th match as a Rambler, but that serve is well wide. Just his 10th set of the year. Yeah, we saw, I mean, a lot of Ramblers have seen action throughout the season, and that helps them in situations like this where no matter who's called, when your number's called, you got to step up and play. It's not a matter of these guys going on there just kind of doing whatever. They've got to help the Ramblers right now get to a fourth set. John Hawks choosing to roll the dice. Kept on this side. That was well done by Magnin. Tipped over. Oakley read it. Magnin long run. Setting it up for Jens. Dig by Rogers. And Davazucheva is blocked. Rogers, Machado, and Davazucheva again. Not denied this time. And Ball State continues to win the share of the long rallies. Covering hitters, helping each other out in those spots. And we see a timeout here from the Ramblers. Timeout Loyola. It's 6-3 Ball State. They're looking for a sweep. And to sweep the season series here inside Gentile Arena. We'll take a break for this timeout. You're watching. Threatening to pull away here early in set three. Ball State. The Cardinals can feel it right now. Oakley barely kept that off the floor. Battled for it. The net. Point Ramblers. Ref says that Endava Zucheva reached over. Mangan did a nice job of handling that ball. That was tight to the net. Still looked like he was going to set the ball. And that was a trouble. It was a little, little aggressive. Dean Meyer to serve. Machado looking to the far side for Savitsky Lynn. Right back to Machado. Blocked at the net, but just too strongly. It was the combination of Miller Truby and new entry Ben Montplacer, yeah. the redshirt junior from Irvine, California, another newcomer into the match. The whole bench being emptied right now, Ray, for the Ramblers. Montplacer had a chance to play solid for the Ramblers in seasons past. Yes. Here is Montplacer. It's close to his first dig. Brooks. Magnin near side for Truby, the left-handed kill. It's got to be nice for the Ramblers. You just start throwing out another another hockey line here, and these guys can still perform and do things at a high level. Now, yes, the you know the clock's up against them, where they've really got to be able to put it together. Truby's done a really nice job serving so far for the Ramblers in this season. Only starter on the floor for Loyola is the libero Oakley, and Davazucheva. Dug out by Oakley. Magnin, here's Truby from the back row. Took too much of an angle. So no matter who you have on the floor right now, what you want to try to do to the Ramblers is force Ball State to make plays. If Ball State makes better plays, so be it. That's kind of how it works out. Ramblers did a nice job on the back row attack earlier, but again, it leads to a hitting error by Truby taking the ball wide. Jens. Magnin back for Jens. That went in the net, it looked like. They say it's a block by Ball State, and play continues. Machado, big swing there by Wallace, dug out by Oakley. Savitsky Lynn, too much. Might be a challenge here from Ball State, let's see. It was so much earlier in the point, but certainly from our vantage point, I didn't see any Ball State contact on that ball. No, I think it might have, been, I thought Coach Cruz was gonna challenge the swing from Savitsky Lynn uh, against the block. Point went to the Ramblers. As that attack went long, and Davazucheva likewise misses long. See again, see now nice job from the Ramblers seeing four, four hands up that time to touch the, the back row attack from Davazucheva. And Davazucheva now with three attacking airs on the day to go with his eight kills, hitting 227. Jens to serve, well long. Ball State maintains their lead here in set three as they aim for the sweep. And no matter what right now, the Ramblers are really trying to, are feeling the pressure to be able to stay with Ball State for as long as they possibly can. Magnin back set, Truby, that grazed the net. Machado and then just 
Not what he wanted from Rodney Wallace. That sails well long, and the Ramblers take the serve right back. And the Ramblers now, for what it's worth, right? You have a completely different lineup minus your your libero. You still have a chance to tie this up with Montplacier back to score. Montplacier to serve. Redshirted last year after two years of action. Parker winding up, but denied by the front court of Loyola. Combination there of Brooks and Meyer. Nice job by Brooks getting his hands across the net. Really good move. And again, it's this rotation one for Ball State where, where the Rammers have found success has been in this rotation. Loyola looking for their first lead of set three. Savitsky Lind says not so fast. That's a kill. Ball State back up. Nice shot by Savitsky Lind to take the ball off the edge, down the line to score. Savitsky Lind, he's had a big day so far today. That is his 10th kill. He's the first Ball State in Ball State player, I should say, in a double digits. Oakley, Magnin, Meyer dug out by the setter, Machado, but he couldn't find a teammate. Point Ramblers. Ben Ramblers are staying within it. And it's really hard for people to understand, like, it's a good play. They're gonna have to continue to do this now 20 more times, 30 more times, just to get out of this set. Machado for Savitsky Lind. It's another kill. And another ball. Ball right into Ray's lap. Got two of them today. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Get that through there. Nice aim. Thank you. For those who couldn't see it, Ray just delivered a crisp bounce pass across the floor here at Gentile Arena. Boy, just no nostalgia there for me. Magnin Meyer. Right into the no man's land at the feet of Patrick Rogers, Point Ramblers. See the Ramblers now using more of the quick. Amplacier came in, got a couple quick kills from Angan. Now Myers involved, a couple kills. Want to continue to take pressure off the left sides. Serve here for Brooks. Nice job by Rogers on the serve. Receiving the kill by Andava Zucheva. Just too much to handle for Jens. When the pass is solid for Ball State, it's really hard to defend. And that's why serving such a big deal about how putting serving pressure on teams. Andava Zucheva up to nine kills, but Ball State's team attacking numbers have dipped significantly already. They were at 418 to begin this set. They're down to 316. It's given the Ramblers a chance. Jens! Full swing. That was a nice toss from Mangan. Trying to get himself back on track. Really good job handling the first contact from the Ramblers. And he has a good swing. You see more energy from the Ramblers. Just want to continue to battle, want to defend home court. Want to keep playing here in Gentile Arena. Meyer serving. Rogers, Machado, and Davazucheva. That set. Almost hit the scoreboard. That ball hits the ceiling. Jens finds the corner. Back-to-back -back kills Jack Jens. That's a nice life. Nice swings. You know, it's it's hard for players to understand. You know, you go through your career and you've won the opportunities, and and sometimes it's able to be there for you, and sometimes it's not. But to be able to go back out there, understand your role, accept it, and execute it's really critical. And Davazucheva again. That's his tenth kill. And nice swing by Zavazicheva. Just faster on his swing. Should be knew he had a chance on that ball. Just missed it. Zavazicheva now to serve. 18 in red. Now up to 32 sets on the season in nine matches. Brooks. Magnin outside. Jens again. Kept off the floor. What an effort by Savitsky Lynn. Play continues. Magnin. Montclassier kept alive by Rogers. Free ball. And over by Gray. Truby off the block. And Davazucheva, Machado, Rogers the kill. That's a great swing from Rogers. Taking that ball off the block. You'll probably see Coach Hawks challenge the pancake from Savitsky Lynn. The green card is out as expected. They are challenging the pancake. It was close. Keep this match alive. All right. So Savitsky Lynn tried to lay out for that ball. Would have been his dig, but it ended up being 
point to the Ramblers. Nice job by Rogers on the serve receive. He follows through. Did it take a touch? No, point Ramblers. Like calling for one. Might see a challenge here before we get to the timeout. And we will. Donan Cruz says, I would also like a challenge. He's going to say that that did take a nick off the fingertip of a Rambler. So you see how important it is how teams hold on to their timeout, their challenges, and really use them when they need them in this situation, especially for both these teams to use their challenges now as we get in the later part of the match. Take another look. It'd be the right ring finger, it looks like, of Colton Brooks is what is at issue here. Well, I think, I mean, I, I would go with the, with, the, with the net action first. So you see Montfosier and it looks like Mangan trying to touch that ball. And it's just hard. Now, people, if they don't know, there's also other cameras available for, for the officials to see what, what goes on. That correction, that's Mangan who's at the net, not Brooks, as we take one more look. So Joe Gustin right now, the second official, is looking to see if there's any kind of action, Ooh. any kind of action where the, a finger might move. It, it, it is a touch. I was going to say, based on the look we're looking at right now, you can see that that finger of Mangan does flinch back a bit, and it's a point for Ball State. And there's no complaint from, from the Ramblers. Now it's important to try to win this here on the float serve for the Ramblers to go into the timeout at 15-14. Oh, there was a timeout called earlier, wasn't there? My fault, I apologize. No, no worries, and also we just had back-to-back -back challenges, so that affected these two more timeouts. I think the, the players are rested enough. Yes, Wong. And now Loyola want a challenge for a touch. Is it gonna be three in a row? Yes, it is. Three points, three challenges. And so that's why I was way off. You know, I thought there might have been a timeout here for media. We've taken so many breaks in this situation. There's three guys here. Do any of them touch this ball? It's the left hand of Lucas Machado yeah, looks, that we're looking at this time. Number nine. Like his edge. It looks like the, his, his, his outside hand might have touched that ball. And this review is a very quick one. We do have a touch off of Machado. Point Ramblers. So Loyola has now used three challenges today. Ball State has used just one. And they've and both teams have won challenges. So they've been able to keep their challenges. What you'll see in the international game is uh, we get to a point now because players know they've touched the ball. They'll let the ref know, hey, you know what? I touched it. We can kind of move on and keep going. Now, especially when you're at that elite of a level, the margins are so fine. Great. Nice blocking job there by Montplacier. From the back row, it's Jens, but it's wide. Again, it's a nice play from Jens, and there's nothing wrong for the aggression of it. It just ends up being another attacking error for the Ramblers. It just puts more pressure on them now inside out. Ramblers' hitting percentage has dipped back below 200. They're down to 174 as a team. Ball State at 321. The serve by Machado. Magnin, far side, Brooks straight down. <laughs> Yeah, nice tempo there from Mangan out there to Brooks. But they've never left. Ramblers fighting for their lives in this match as you get another look at that slam by the redshirt senior. And again, you see more attacking from both teams tonight on the edge down the line. Both teams are giving the lineup right now offensively. Or Machado looking for Slavitsky Lind. Kept off the floor there by Jens. Brooks again. Well, I think, Ray, the speed of that one was about 10% of the last one, but it does sure. the job just as well. And that, and that, again, that's the, the relationship with setter and hitter, where uh, one of them might think it, they can still be in system and run at a tempo. And if not, you're going to miss it high. Allow that person to go up and go hit the ball. First two-point run for the Ramblers in this set. First time they've led by two. Machado, far side. Rogers, Montclassier keeps it off the floor. Magnin takes a swing, rare occurrence there. Slavinsky Lind wide. And this might lead to a timeout for Ball State. Loyola with their first three point lead in a set at any point today as Ball State take a timeout. So you see another swing there for Ball State trying to take the ball down the edge, down the line. 
where you don't stay its only road win of the season so far. This would be just their second. Monclosier serves out of the timeout. Machado brought it back, and then a huge assist to the net by Rogers. That could not have come over any slower. And that's the, the liberal play we talked about before, where just, you know, sometimes that ball might have been called a lift beforehand. Machado still stays aggressive and plays it up in the air. Ends up being a point to Ball State. And now, again, for Ball State, one of their more consistent servers, Rogers is back to serve. Jens. Magnin, here comes Truby. Physics on his side, that almost seven foot frame, creating that motion arm for that velocity. And I'll give a shout out to Dean Meyer in that situation where Meyer had to get full respect from Wallace. Ends up being a one on one against uh, for Truby against Ndava Zacheva. Machado straight up, and that just goes into the chest Great of Oakley. Defense. What an effort! By Jens, point continues. Machado, Savitsky land, it's a block. Nico, Demas, Meyer. Great hustle there from Jens. Jack Jens has been the Mr. Everything for the Ramblers in his careers. He's been a pin attacker, been a serving specialist, been a libero. I mean, whatever it takes right now, he's, he's stepping in to help the Ramblers try to extend this to a fourth set. Credit to Colton Brooks as well, who was in on that block. Machado and Davazucheva right touch. to Jens. Magnin far side and just misjudged by Colton Brooks. The set was a little low as well. Four hits, point Ball State. Okay, again, another attacking error for the Ramblers where Ball State didn't need to earn that point. Now the Ramblers are going to reset themselves, even it out with a side out. Ramblers still lead by three. Xander Pink on cue has come in at about this spot in all three sets. Magnin. Brooks off the block at a point. And that's a good job by Brooks redeeming himself. Knew that last swing attempt was not his best. Came back that time in the rotation one, attacked the ball off the block to score. Lucas Pilak, number 11, one of the liberos, has checked back in for Ball State. And they take a timeout. Down three here. The Ramblers feeling it a bit here. They lead by four. Four points away from taking a set for the first time in this match. Out of the timeout, Colton Brooks serving. Into the net. I was just about to say, as the Ramblers have been in this spot before, and they're not looking for a deja vu situation, but they are going to be scoreboard watching. And if they manage their side, the rest should take care of itself. But you know Ball, Ball State's going to continue to play at a high level. Speaking of at a high level, this is the fourth straight match against the ranked opponent for the Ramblers all in conference. That serve likewise misses as the team's trade service errors. So now, still looking for a serving sub for Loyola. See Anderson coming in. And again, the serving, the special teams, as I call them, kind of like if you're watching a hockey, hockey game, you see the, you know, the power play line. That Anderson to serve. We only need three points. Machado straight up, and Will Patterson finds the angle. Patterson with a nice angle that time to score. Right back in comes D. Meyer to the bench. Despite his good serve, goes Lucas Anderson. So now you have Endava Zocheva serving. Before it was Rogers that went on the run for Ball State. Endava Zocheva, they could use a run right here. Truby denied. You might see a timeout out quickly from, from the Ramblers. Patrick Rogers, the denial, assisted by Will Patterson. Timeout Loyola. They still lead by two. They want to make sure they hold on to that slim lead to close out this set. Okay. So the NXT will win that battle. Ball State now under 300 hitting as a team for the first time today. That happened within the last couple points. And Davazucheva again. Yints brought back. Michael Sear didn't get a good hit on it, but it did go over at least. Rogers. Long run here. Yents couldn't do anything with it. Point Ball State, they're back within one. And it's close, you can feel it. Not sure what the discussion's gonna be, but I think it's maybe just a little gamesmanship from Coach Hawks here in this spot. Ramblers are without a timeout, but they do probably have at least one challenge left. Just a little chat there with the down referee. 
And Davizucheva again, Oakley. Magnin, here comes Truby. It took a deflection, point Rambler. That's a better swing from Truby. You are the height you are for a reason. <laughs> you attack a ball at that height, it's really hard for people to slow you down. When you want to take a swing and go a little bit lower, then a lot of folks can be involved. Now let's see if Truby can go up there and put one away with his ace. Pressure is on for the big man. And it sails long. Okay, so now, almost a similar situation where Ramblers run a two-hitter situation. With Yenta Malpasir, Shubu's also out of the back row. Last set, Loyola led 23-20. They did not win that set. They need a different outcome here. What an effort by Ndavazucheva, but it's not enough. Point Ramblers, and upcoming now, their first set point of the day. Here we go. There's a spot where just you kind of know who you want to set. Set that player, let that player go work. Crowd on their feet at Loyola. Looking to will their Ramblers into the fourth set. Jack gets to serve for it. And Davizucheva, Machado, off the floor by Truby. Great effort. Brooks off the block. Ramblers win set three. We're not done yet here inside Gentile Arena at Loyola Chicago. We've got at least one more for you. Ramblers stay alive. We'll take a break. You're watching men's volleyball from the MIVA here on ESPN. We've been maybe right about maybe, now. Maybe, I mean, it's the same way the score that we saw earlier for the Ramblers being able to win that tight set at the end. You know, they probably were feeling it as well. Dan Mangan gets us underway here in set four for the Ramblers. And Davizucheva, it's a block. The combination of Miller Truby and Ben Montplacier. Truby takes up a lot of space. He does a really nice job, especially when he's able to load up and get his arms across the net. He is a big force. You see any, see any back row attack here for Ball State. It's another block. It's Montplacier again, this time aided by Colton Brooks. And a note here on Ben Montplacier. This is only his third match of the season. His first one was the second one at Stanford, which featured basically an entirely rotated lineup. And then against Kentucky in non-conference. That's serving the net by Mangan. Not how you would have drawn it up. Uh, now, again, I mean, the same thing is going to kind of come out of mouth of this whole set where the Ramblers are... are or in a good spot, they're just going to continue to play at a steady level to get take this to a fifth. Rodney Wallace, the first server of this set for Ball State. Here comes Truby. Now, this is a great opportunity for Truby to really show his impact right now for the Ramblers. He's one of this moment and really has a chance where he could dominate and go out there and have such an impact, not only with his spiking, but also with his block and also his serve. Hitting 304 on the season. It's a second consecutive miss served by the Ramblers. The sort of mistake they cannot afford right now. After the Ramblers attempt to set out here, then the, their experienced players really have to buckle down and work on being able to serve consistently. And serve aggressively, but also put pressure on Ball State. Raven Savitsky Lind at the service line. Jens giving and going and getting a kill. Again, Yen seeing more edge there, taking the ball down the line to score. You see the ball come on in now, looks like, on the right side. First appearance of the day for Dyer Ball, the opposite side senior from Angola, Indiana. His family has a very long history at Ball State. His grandfather, Arnie, yes. played for the Cardinals back in the mid-1960s. What a swing by the setter, Machado. Yeah, Machado now with his second kill. What do you have here for tonight? I believe that's right. Yep. Yep. One throw down, one swing. Also, if you think the current conferences are a little scattered, I can only imagine how hard it was for a school from Muncie, Indiana, a men's volleyball team, to find people to play in 1967. Well, I'll tell you, we can get into the history lesson of, of, of Ball State and Dr. Don Shondell and and what they've been able to do. I mean, 
Coach Shondell would go into gym classes and, and pull out guys. There have been many stories about him walking to gym, gym class, finding a guy, someone like Kevin Furnish, and make, turn him into a, a, a great player. Um, there have been so many players that have come through that have been not only great players, but also coaches when they were done. Magnin from the back row, taking a full swing. <laughs> Believe that was Brooks. Colton Brooks gets the kill, couldn't quite see that second number. Yeah, and on Ball State, Ray, there, there's, uh, there's something to being first. There's not many collegiate volleyball programs, especially at the Division I men's level in the state of Indiana. It's not a state historically where high school boys have had the opportunity to play, and Ball State has kind of been the flag bearer for decades in terms of men's volleyball in the state of Indiana. Purdue-Fort Wayne would like to enter the shot. They also have, have a lot of history, and that's where Arnie Ball came from when they were IPFW back in the day, um, the Volleydons. And there, there's a lot of, but, but also where, you know, Coach Ball was, is a Ball State alum, so it's from the family. Truby, Magnin, looking near side for Jens. Great cover by Oakley. They'll try that again, it's blocked again. Truby this time, what a rocket from number five. Man, just nice hustle from the Ramblers. Oakley steps in and takes care of the swing from Jens. That ball was good enough he blocked from Machado, it was covered up by Oakley. Continue to rally, Mangan sets the back row set to Truby, who rocks the ball to the line. Can I just feel like Truby has a chance to have really big impact here in this, set, in this fourth set. You saw that smile, the DJ played I feel good in between points. Truby's feeling good right now. Parker right into the block. Magnet, great awareness to keep the point alive. Brooks deflects there to Ndavazucheva. Crazy Karam still alive. Punched into the air by Jens. Watch for Bick. Far side. Where did that ball come down? It's on the side point for Ball State. Usually my vision's pretty good, but I was deceived by that ball coming straight down it as we take another look. It comes pretty quick. Got a feeling you're gonna see the left sides for Ball State have a lot of impact now. Oh, clearly that's what Dyer Ball's been sent out there to do. Well, he's coming here to have impact for sure. I know his dad would love to be here. He's probably out coaching right now this weekend somewhere at a club tournament. Nice reach by Davosucheva, that's into the bench. Hopefully everyone's all right down to our left point, Ramblers. Good hustle from Ball Machado, running that ball down. You think there's any pressure on Dyer Ball to one day be a very successful Division I men's volleyball coach? Not at all. I tell you, <laughs> he's in it right now, and he's doing it. And he gets to represent and, and do some really good things. I was fortunate to play with Lloyd way back in the day when short guys were allowed to and, and tall guys were able to. Well, tall guys can still play it, I guess. But you're telling me there weren't six foot two liberos back in your day. We, there were no liberos <laughs> back in the day, but it was still great to play the game. How it has changed. Whoa, from the back row, flying out of nowhere, Tanashi and Davazucheva. I told you, they're going to see the left sides have a lot more impact, I feel, for Ball State. So you're going to see and Davazucheva involved. Probably going to see Rodgers involved, both front row and back row. The serve from Rogers. Magnin for Brooks. What a job there by Gray. It does nick the scoreboard. He did well to get in front of it, but luck not on his side on that occasion. Yeah, you know what? Enjoy that swing from Brooks. Gonna be aggressive. You get a chance to go out there now to go do it, go do it. And he, you know, he remembers the roll shot he had late in the third set and redeemed himself attacking the ball the next play on the right side down the line. All of his swings have been very aggressive, very physical, done a really nice job. Magnin's last serve was into the bottom of the net. In play this time. Machado, short set. Getting the job done is Rodney Wallace. Have not called the middles names a lot for Ball State lately. Really hasn't been a middles match. This game has been played almost exclusively right against the post. Yeah, you know what, I, I, I agree with you on that. And, and both teams would really like to have their middles involved as much as they possibly can. It's almost like the teams kind of shook hands and agreed, we'll just cancel each other out in that <laughs> regard today. <laughs> Magnin, Montplacier got a light swing to that. Ball's first attack of the day is dug out by Magnin. Brooks blocked, dig by Oakley. Truby caught the line. 
Good job by Mangan taking care of balls, running his offense on his side. And again, I, I, I'm just going to keep, I feel like the three people we're going to talk about right now are going to be the two left sides from Ball State, Riders and, and Davis Ochoa, and also Truby for Loyola. I think it's worth saying, Mangan now with two digs on the day. He only had one all year coming into today. Toward the bench, Brooks. Couldn't get there. It's a kill for Endava Zucheva, his 12th. Well, that hustle from Brooks comes from the hustle of Jens back in that, in the set beforehand. Let the young players see what the old guys are trying to do as far as it's not just about attacking the ball. A serve here for Dyer Ball. Loyola back up three. And right now, hasn't been a flashy set so far, Ray, but Loyola look comfortable in where they're at. They're, they're making some plays right now. You've seen more errors from Ball State. That just helps take some of the pressure off the Ramblers. If you were with us for the first two sets, you'd find it hard to believe Loyola is approaching where Ball State is in terms of hitting percentage. It was about a 400-point difference after the first set. It's now just a matter of, you know, tenths of a percent. Now we're just down to plays. Saw now two big swings from Davis Ochoa. First one, a big. He came flying through on that time, really aggressive on the outside before he went, went back to serve. Speaking of big swings, Miller Truby. There you go. Ramblers right back up three. Yeah, it's another good spot for the Ramblers to take out, find a way to extend the lead here on Truby's serve. Been a big part of why Loyola lead in set four. Battled for at the net, getting a fist to it was Pitlack. Here's Rogers blocked, and it caught the line. What a play from Dean Meyer. That's one of those plays where Meyer gets a little lucky here as Ball State calls their timeout. Did a good job battling it, and the Rammers end up winning that point. First timeout of this fourth set. Loyola in position to take us the distance to set five. Will they do so? We'll have to. And, and battle in this match. But they cannot, at any point in time, allow Ball State to have, you know, take a breath and, and, and get momentum back. Truby had the luxury of that delay to a degree because he's serving, so we could not resume without him. Rogers off the block. Brooks, long run for Magnin. Jens off the block. Point Ramblers. Magnin with another good job setting the ball on the outside. D. Meyer with a really good touch off the swing of Rogers. And then you see the block now. The Ramblers have more of an impact. Maybe it's not leading to a stuff block, but it's for sure getting a little bit better with block touches leading to points in transition. Five point set lead, largest of the day for Loyola. Ace. Miller Truby. Then Truby continues to show himself. That's his 14th of the season. And it's a real good spot for Truby's strength. Serving that ball from area five to area five. So left side of the court to left side of the court. Where Rodgers has to pass the ball. Again, back to back. This might be a challenge. That was really close. The referee hesitated. Ball State's going to challenge, yeah. which is natural given the referee's reaction. Yeah, it's going it's, it's to check and see. This should be pretty quick one way or the other. I, 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 with my eye, I thought it was long, um, but not real sure in this spot. But either way, that's the ball that Trudy wants to serve. He wants to serve in that, in that spot there. Let's take a look. That looked long. Oh, look, it's in the bounce. Yep. They're going to say it yep. does clip the line right there. Nice job. And props to the official on the far side, the linesman, who initially went to raise his flag and then said, no, I think that caught the line. And right, right. he was. Seven-point lead for the Ramblers. This is the most dominant set we've seen from anybody today. For sure. We've seen Nathan go now coming in as a setter. It'll be interesting to see how he manages this situation. Oh, I 
Whoops. We got yeah. We got a shirt change. That is Peter Zorowski. You who? Are. Yeah, my bad. No, that well, it's. I don't even think it's your bad. This is the third different number he's worn this season. Okay. So that's uh, understandable. He has worn eight when Vanitz Buckholz hasn't played. He has worn 23, and today he's wearing two. The freshman from Oak Park, Illinois, and Oak Park River Forest High School. He does not care what number he has. He just wants to be in the square. Apparently, serving Will Patterson. Mangan, quick set. That almost hit the head of Wallace. And that hit the scoreboard. Ball State lost sight of it. Point Ramblers and a frustration there from Dyer Ball. You don't see that ball hit a scoreboard in Worthen, that's for sure. So just not used to it. There's a look there at Zorowski. He was the number one ranked high school player in the state of Illinois last year. Led Oak Park River Forest to a third place state finish. Big get for Ball State, especially given the volleyball powers that exist here in Illinois and in Chicago specifically. Got a shout out to OPRF. Great coaching staffs out that way. Got a few guys who were playing in that final four a year ago out on the court today. The North and Western suburbs have become an increasing volleyball hotbed after it was for a long time, the domain of the South and Southwest suburbs, and you look no further than Lewis University's program for that history. For sure. D. Meyer just took that swing a little wide. And again, we're talking about just the Ramblers taking a breath, allowing Ball State to, to come back in. Magnin, quick set for Meyer, kept in play by Zorowski. Right at the net. Was that a little two handed? It looks, I don't think there's going to be a chat. I, I, I don't think there's going to be. I think there's going to be a challenge in this situation. So both coaches are up to make a point. The refs are going to meet. I think everybody agrees that this is a contentious decision, as it looked like Patrick Rogers might have grabbed that volleyball. Well, well, he did. Now the question really is about the touch in that situation. But it also, it's about getting both sides to make sure they keep their their energy on their side of the court. Sure looks like a push and a throw, so it goes out of play. So the next question is, does the man on the end of the wall, that's Brooks, make any contact with that ball? Well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to check it here. Magnus, excuse yeah, me. Man, yeah, Mangan's there in that spot. So, and that's, you know, Mangan's got, he's, yep, did a nice job with his IQ. Did it hit his hand? Looking to see where we're at. No one's. They're going to say it is not a carry and that it did hit Mangan's hand. Mm -hmm. That is the decision. Zorowski's first serve is wide. So again, for the Ramblers, it ends up being a wash. Now it's a plus one for Ball State where they are able to inch back a little bit closer. Ramblers want to do a good job of somehow continue to stay at this level and, if, and at worst, trade points. A spot that Ball State has found themselves at, at several times today. Loyola now in the driver's seat. Up five here in set four. This is the hardest, this is one of the toughest rows right now for Ball State. But Rogers is back behind. Lucas Anderson in as a serving specialist. Zorowski brought it off the net, but lifted. Yeah, Rogers coming in this spot. It's really challenging. We're kind of battle through. So we've seen before in rotation one where Rogers has been, been the, the exclusive hitter attacking the ball back behind. But Andavis and is also in the back row, so he might also, he could also be involved. A second serve for Anderson here. On the attack, it's Rogers dug out by Anderson. Got to go over. And it does. Great effort by Mangan. From the back row, and Davizucheva right to Truby. Mangan, near side, blocked. Patrick Rogers. And that's just one of those. We saw an energy play from the Ramblers in set number three, where they scrambled through and were able to get a point, help them pull out the set. Now let's see if that's the kind of energy play the Ball State needs to get themselves that much closer. Rogers to serve. That's his third block of the evening. Also has a team leading 15 kills. That serve though is long. I tell you some good team stuff that I saw from the Ramblers earlier. Jens and Truby kind of ran down the ball and it's better to have too many than too little. Those two both came together. Wasn't the best contact. When the play was done, both players made sure they saw each other eye to eye, made sure they let them know that, hey, you know what? Both made a mistake. We'll make the next play better. Mangan over. 
Pitlack, far side, and Davizucheva had to reach for it. It was outside the post. It's a point for Loyola, and they lead by seven. So you see now with a setting change for Ball State, similar for the Rambers, where it's been, you know, the inconsistency of, of setter to hitter. Really gone in opposite ways almost today. A little bit. Mangan another serve. Pitlack. Zorowski. Ball is blocked, but out of play. Ball well, uses his IQ to take the ball off the block to score. Yeah, he wasn't in a good position to actually get a lot of purchase on that, and he did well to earn that point. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Just, just IQ where you realize that swing I really need to make better. Make the ball better. Play it off the block and see what happens. Making his once a set appearance. This is Xander Pink. The D. Five foot seven from Mililani, Hawaii, and Punahu High School. And when he when he goes into serving more than it's 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 a really big deal. The crowd loves it. Mont Plessier. Hello, his second kill. See good connection there between Mangan and Matt Plessier. Only had three kills all year coming into today. He's going to match that at this rate. Yeah. We'll, go, we'll go season high right now. Whatever it takes the Ramblers to get the fifth set. If the Ramblers are able to come all the way back, John Hawks is going to have some interesting lineup decisions to make next time out. That was a bit of a surprise there. It looked like it was going to Indava Zucheva. Instead, it was attacked by Patterson. Meanwhile, here's Truby off the block. Right to Rogers. That was well outside. And what a job. Talk about IQ. Tanashi and Davizucheva did all he needed to do. He just kept it in play, and that allowed his team to have a chance, and they get the point. Yes, indeed. Truby's not involved again, and, it, and it's good. You like that playback, but let's see if he gets set here now to redeem himself. Ball State need a serving run. Will it come from Dyer Ball? No. For the Rammers have done a nice job of being able to stay at the same level. You'll we'll see another serving sub come in for, for the Ramblers. Here's an old friend. Haven't seen him in a couple of sets. Ryan McElligot. McElligot comes in now as a serving sub. Again, another lefty with spin. But put in a spot where right now and Davos Ochova and Rodgers are in a, in a good spot where McElligot can score, serve. Looking for his third ace of the day there from the back row. It's ball. It took a deflection off the left hand of Jens. Point ball state. Ball did a really nice job again finding finding hands. It's narrowly a back row attacking violation. I don't think his foot could have been any closer really to the close. service line without hitting it. You are correct. Out of the corner of my eye, I was actually expecting a whistle for it, but he remained behind the line. And Davizucheva serving. Magnin for Truby. What a block. It's a three-man operation between Zorowski, Rogers, and Patterson. And again, that's one of those things where Truby will learn. He understands that he takes that ball low. The, the opportunity for a team to block them comes ends up being really a uh, high percentage. Rogers being involved in Davos Ocheva being involved. Who's the next player for, for Ball State to step up and make a play? Both teams with one timeout remaining in this set, and Davos Ucheva to serve. Oakley, Magnin from the back row. Brooks off the block, straight in the air. Gray, Zawoski from the back row, and Davos Ucheva. It's wide, no deflection. Point Ramblers, set, point. Once again, the fans are on their feet. The Ramblers on the brink of forcing a fifth set. What a match it's been. I see the matchup here between Mangan and, and Rogers on the outside. Truby. Rogers. Pitlack back for Rogers. The block. We're going to set number five. Loyola takes set four, 25 18. What a match. Two of the best teams in the conference, two of the best teams in the country, and we're going to a fifth set to decide it all. And the libero is Lucas Pitlack. See the energy right now from both teams to start this fifth set. Dan Mangan gets us going. Rogers, Machado, the attack and the block. Maplasir and Brooks with the denial. Just missed it. Point outside that time for Ball State. Machado comes back in and uses the quick. Finds a way to score from someone else besides the, the pin hitters of Ball State. Serving is Roddy Wallace. 
The dropper over from Miller Truby. One apiece here to start set five. Again, Rammers doing a nice job coming out of that rotation one with Truby. Still feel like Truby's gonna have a real big impact here. Needs to have a real big impact for the Rammers to put themselves in a spot for success. Serving Colton Brooks. And Davazucheva fought for it in the net and a whistle. Point Ramblers. Nice job by Maposir being aggressive. Ball's in the plane. So when the ball is in the plane, it's kind of like a 50-50, kind of a toss-up ball. Players are allowed to go after and get it, but if you're in the back row, that's not that's not legal. And Brooks gives the point right back to Ball State. Two all. Brooks had a chance to serve twice, so that gives the Rambers the, the advantage being up plus one in that situation, even though it ties it up. Savinsky Lynn to serve. Ten kills on the day. Again, basically didn't see him at all in set four. Right there to Jens. It's off the scoreboard. It's out of the floor. It's a point for Ball State. So Ball State gets that point back and gets the advantage 3-2. It's early, but again, we know about the momentum in this match where the Rams have really been trying to find ways to stretch out their leads. We've only seen that one time so far tonight, and that was in set four. Both teams do get two timeouts despite the shorter set, so this thing can be slowed down by the coaches if necessary. Winding up for the kill, that's Jack Yentz. Yentz. And yet another physical swing from Yentz, attacking the ball through the block, a ball state to score. His sixth kill, we take another look. See the hole there between the two. Yentz does a good job of finding that to score. A hush falling over the crowd here at Gentile Arena as Montplacier serves. Rogers, Machado, Davazucheva off a deflection, point ball state. Davazucheva with another, another nice swing, finding a way to get his hands, or get his hand to attack the ball fast, and the block was ready to form. And now Tanashi and Davazucheva to serve. 14 kills for him today on 36 total attacks. Six digs, four blocks. He's been everywhere. Off the floor by Gentz. Far side, Shruby and Davazucheva. Here's Rogers. Blocked right back. Rogers will try again off the block. From the back row, it's Brooks. Sliding there was Cameron Gray and Davazucheva dug off the floor by the center. Magnin point ball state as they couldn't do it twice with Matt Oakley. Another now rally from both teams. Ball State's won two of them now to get the advantage of plus two. Might be our longest rally tonight. We don't have an official count on that, but it feels right. It was, it was, it's a long one for sure. And now a critical spot for the Ramblers. Jens. Magnin. Off the block for a kill by D. Meyer. Nice job by Magnin. Handle that ball. That was tight. And also a good job by Meyer not quitting on the play. Understanding where his time and space was. Giving himself an opportunity to swing on that ball. Ramblers are still chasing. See what Chicago does here. Does he try to find the quick again to go outside of Rogers? He also has Endavas Ocheva in the back row. Truby's got two aces today. Rogers. Endavas Ucheva takes setting duty into the scoreboard and calmly over by Pitlack. Here comes Jens. And it just eats up the Ball State blockers. Point Loyola. Ramblers get now their, their advantage back to tie it back up. And good job by Truby finding that area of the court where challenges the outside hitters to pass and also attack. Truby again. Right to Rogers again. Machado back for Rogers. Nice block there by Dean Meyer. Full swing. Savinsky Lind making some lemonade out of lemons. That didn't look like much, and he got a kill out of it. Yeah. Little, little chaos ball going on. I know Coach Hawks is probably questioning the, the judgment calls, but allowing the players to play. Ball State, back up one. Patterson serve. Here comes Jens, high off the block. Savitsky Lind, Machado from the back row, and Davazucheva, great diving effort by Oakley. Jens, the block, Machado the setter. Wallace there as well. Be interesting to see if Coach Hawks decides to use the timeout here. At, at seven serving five, or does he wait until the teams make the turn? He'll keep his timeouts in his pocket for now. 
Another serve up coming for Will Patterson, the freshman from Loveland, Ohio, and Archbishop Moeller. Feel like the Rambles want to get Truby involved here. Oakley. Yentz again. He's blocked again. Machado has his number right now, and it's a three-point lead by Ball State. Teams should switch sides here. Probably lead to a timeout. And he might be the set. And it's going to be on your quarterback right now. You know, it's Machado for Ball State. It's going to be Mangan for for Loyola, understanding who to set when. Another serve for Will Patterson. Brooks, Mangan, here is Truby. Block, Brooks, Mangan, Yentz, block, wide. Nice and Yentz that time getting enough power. Yeah, nice, that time, Yentz did a good job of tacking the ball inside of the block to score the ball out of bounds before he hit a couple balls in the middle of the seam. That ball comes back pretty fast. Up to serve now, Jack Yentz. Yeah, the Rambers not kind of need to find ways to manufacture a point somewhere here and there. And Davizucheva, Savinsky Lind, the kill. That looked easy for Patrick Rogers. That's the least contested attack we've seen either side yeah. have in a while. Rogers made, made a really good job handling the out of system ball. Ball was played high. Savinsky Lind, ball hits inside the block or kind of through the block to score. Should note that that last stoppage was a media timeout. Both teams have two timeouts. And that's four hits. Nice effort by Dean Meyer to force Ball State into trouble. Rambers come back and get a good side out. Now looking for the sports serving specialist to come in for Dean Meyer. You see Anderson stepping up here. Now, uh, Ball State's gonna be in their rotation one again, where they've had some struggle. Rogers is going to be back behind. Savisky Lynn has also scored on the left side. Anderson serve. To the back row, and Davazucheva. And Davazucheva's pretty high. Way up there for kill number 17. Yeah, like you can kind of see it here in the replay. He is. My man is flying. Just, just an impressive swing. They're going to challenge that this was a back row attack. So the question is, did Ndavazucheva keep his feet behind the line? And now both teams have three challenges, and it, it's kind of like three stops in play. And I, Plus I guess, all the timeouts. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, mean, I challenged that too because that didn't look really human, the, the swing he just had. So watch his feet here on the upcoming attack. Where does he take off from? And his foot was on the line, say the officials. That's a good call. So maybe it wasn't human after all, but it still was impressive. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so the Rambler's going to point back. Again, still looking for Rogers back behind. Sabisky Lynn has been involved on the left side before. We started this set. Wallace was involved in the quick. So really all hitters are available for Ball State in this situation. Anderson again, and Davazucheva. Machado, far side, four. Pa Patrick Rogers takes a deflection. And it's a point for Ball State. Into the match come the libero Oakley and Dean Meyer back as well. In rotation, Anderson to the bench. So as teams come in now, as you see their side out rotations, you can kind of see what hitters are considered like, you know, the higher priority and which ones are the lower ones. Montplacier gets a kill, and with that, he has matched his season total in this match. And that's one of those where you think, you don't really think Montplacier is going to get involved offensively, but did a nice job between he and Mangan to score that ball in the gap set. Now, does that mean Ball State comes back and tries to use their middle attack, even though they have an Zocheva on the outside? Pitlock, Machado, straight down the middle. It's Rodney Wallace. There it is. Kind of a, the tit for tat. You called it. And, and both those plays kind of wash out, but you know that stars still have to be involved. So, and Davis is going to be involved. Xander Pinkin is a serving specialist. This is obviously earlier in the rotation than he's been coming in, but with only a 15-point set, that's what you get. That's right at the net. That's trouble, and it's put away by Andava Zucheva. Probably see a timeout here from Loyola. You would think. Yes. 
timeout, Loyola, the first by I And here's two faces we haven't seen since set two. Jake Reed and Parker Van Buren back on the floor for the Ramblers. The Van Buren sub, I completely understand because he's a right-handed hitter on the left side, which, which is pretty important. And then Reed also steps in to help uh, try to attack the ball in the front row. Quickly, what do you think about Truby going to the bench? Um, it's, again, situational. This is a situational play. There is Reed, and here is Van Buren. Back on the floor, back on the score sheet. That's a kill. That is exactly what Coach John Hawks wanted. So now he's going to take, he's going to put Truby back into this situation. Both players do a good, both players do a nice job with their roles. It's really important now for Truby to do a good job of getting his hands across the net to touch the ball on the block, especially on, on, on Davos Ocheva. Uh, they do it again because the ref didn't see the Correct. substitution. It's about as fast as the offense sometimes for both teams. 12-10 Ball State. The one player you really haven't seen much in action in the middle for Ball State. And Reed's serve goes long. Not the time for it. Ball State, two points away from regrouping and taking this match, which at one point it looked like they were on their way to sweeping. So again, you probably see Truby involved here. And Dalvin Ochoa will probably block him ball, go after the hitter. Oakley. Magnin outside, Jens! Big point for the Ramblers. See the Ramblers go for another sub. They subbed earlier, we allowed six total subs. They might be at four subs right now or three. Look and see. One sub was four, it was a serving sub. Oh, I take it back, sorry, it was five subs. So Montplacier has to stay. Montplacier to serve. Ramblers down two. Ball State need just two. Pitlack, Machado, and Davizucheva off the block. Big reach there. One an effort by Magnin. Over by Truby. Kept off the floor by Machado. Pitlack, back row. Sent right back from Rogers. Machado, what a block. Uh, D. Meyer. Or is it? Point, point to Ball State. Just missed. No. Yeah. yeah. Dean Meyer. Meyer went up triumphantly. That's the first thing I saw. Instead, it's point Ball State. Yeah. Look for a timeout here for Loyola. Both teams thought they had it. Timeout Loyola, their second and final timeout. Chato went up on the swing. Swung it faster than, than the blockers were ready. Dean Meyer was a little high on his block. Ball ended up in front of him. It was a bang-bang play where you would hope, and if you're a home fan, you really wanted it to be the point for the Ramblers. Match point, three of them for Ball State. First order business for the Ramblers right now is to side out. Figure out a way to, to side out in this situation. Truby still front row for the Ramblers, if I remember correctly. So if he takes the ball high over the block, he can score. That ball did go under the net, and Meyer didn't even see it. He just saw where it bounced, yeah. I think. Just kind of hoping, wishful thinking there. Take another look at exactly how that happened. See the hands of Meyer, who not across the net at point of contact. Eventually his hands got over, but that time it was too late. You know what I think happened? He saw the ball go off the foot of Jack Jens and careen forward, so he assumed he must yes, have pulled indeed. it off. Yes, indeed. Again, both these teams are three and one in the Maiva. This is a crucial, crucial match for yeah. conference standings as we go forward. So again, the first, the most important thing right now for the Ramblers is the side out. Nothing else really matters right now except to side out in this situation. And if I'm thinking, if I'm going with the the likely scenario is to find Truby involved so Truby can take the ball over the block going against Rodgers. Match point, Tanashi and Davos Ocheva. Off the block, kept alive, over by Rodgers. And that's it, Ball State. They led two sets to none. Loyola fought all the way back, but in the end, it is the Cardinals as they take set number five, 15-11.